Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and in this video I'll be tying the Tan Adams, a great variation of a timeless dry fly. Following the tying, I'll share some of my thoughts and ways that I fish this Tan Adams. Stay tuned. Let's start tying this Tan Adams. In my Stonfo Cayman Vice, I have a hook from Allen Fly Fishing. This is their D101BL. It's a dry fly hook in size 12. Though I do like to both tie and fish this pattern anywhere between sizes 10, the whole way down to a 20, with those medium to smaller sizes being very representational of caddis flies. I'll be talking a little bit more about that later on in the video. For the thread, I'm gonna be using dot Uni. The color's tan. And once you have this thread locked onto your hook, you have a decision to make. And that's whether to tie in your tailing fibers or your parachute post first. In this case, I'm going to go with the former because I like to have those fibers established in the tail and then I'm able to taper my body accordingly and I, have to, I don't have to worry too much about running into that parachute post. Now for the tailing fibers, I typically will grab tailing fibers from the hackles that I'm using. In this case, the two hackles that I'm going to use are grizzly and light ginger. The grizzly is really synonymous with the Adams dry fly. However, this light ginger, when paired with a tan dubbing for the body, are the two main characteristics that will help differentiate this tan Adams from that classic one that we all know. Unfortunately for me, both of these hackles have very small fibers on them. They're not very long. Thus, I'm just going to have to find some longer hackles that have those longer fibers on that will be a little bit better for the tail. So I just have a, a grizzly hackle. You can grab these from the top of most of the, the necks, and they just have a lot of longer fibers on them, and I want to make sure I get some stiffer fibers from it. I'm just going to pull off approximately five to seven fibers. I'm going to line them up against the shank, transfer them, and lock them into place. Once I have those locked into place, I'm going to do the same thing. Here's a light ginger feather. You can see this is one that I just have pulled out, out of one of my, um, my cabinets. I have a bunch of just random hackles that are in there, basically just for this purpose. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just select around five to seven ginger fibers. I don't have to worry about measuring them against the hook. I can just place them so their tips are aligned with the grizzly. Just like before, lock them in place. I'm not going to worry too much about finishing those hackles right now. Instead, I'm just going to wind forward, create a base for my parachute post, and it's now time to tie that in. Now think about your, um, your everyday parachute that you like to fish. Basically, whatever type of material or whatever color parachute post you like to use, you absolutely can do so with this pattern. If you've watched any of my previous parachute patterns, you probably know what my favorite material is. It's some type of Zelon material, and you know my favorite colors. It's gonna be some type of fluorescent pink or fluorescent chartreuse. These are great colors that I can just see really far away. In this case though, because I'm going to be using a larger size, and this size as I mentioned is a size 12, I'm, I don't have to be so cautious. I'm going to be going with these EP fibers in the color of tan. I also like to use the color brown, and though that's a darker color, I can really see it well on a size 10 pattern, but on a size 18 and a size 20, you will not see any fibers this color. Instead, you, you know I'm going to have that fluorescent chartreuse and that pink. They're so much better to see. So in this case, I'm just going to grab a relatively healthy chunk of these fibers. They are going to be getting doubled over, so I don't want to get too many strands. I'm going to trim them, extend my thread, and then I take this, these fibers and place them on the opposite side of my thread, basically on the side of the thread that's facing the camera that's facing you. Then I'm going to double them over and grab them by their tips. Now I can basically slide them up and down the thread, I'm just going to wrap the thread around, slide those down, and now they're locked onto the top of the shank. I put a few locking wraps in front, I'll put one behind, and if I let go, they'll just slightly separate. It's at this point that I'm going to bring my thread up, and then I'm going to parachute wrap it around them clockwise. I'm just going to wet my fingers a little bit, and twist these, it'll really help to just keep them together. And then I'll start my parachute wraps or my helicopter reps. 
we're just trying to, to build a secure base to wrap our hackle around. There's some tools that are out there to, to do this task. I actually have a video that I've made um, regarding it. They are wonderful tools. They make it a little bit easier, but I don't tie that many parachutes on a regular basis, and it's pretty easy just to do this by hand. After you have around 10 or 12 uh, locking wraps, you can just place some figure eights around this. I'm going to wet my fingers a little bit and just pull it forward. We can worry about cutting it later. All right, next I'm going to grab my tails and hold them as I wrap back, helping the taper of this body. And I stop my thread at the approximate point where my barb would be. There is no barb because this is a barbless hook. At that point, I'm going to grab the tailing fibers, lift them up, and place one wrap underneath. Kind of help them up a little bit so that they ride at just a little bit of an angle facing up. Let me zoom in so you can see the next couple steps. All right, at this point, we're going to add some tan dubbing. Whatever tan dubbing you prefer to use, go with it. There's really not one that I can absolutely recommend. I know a lot of guys really prefer super fine dubbing. The color's tan. It's a great one to use. In this case, I think my Uncle John is having uh, a, some type of an impact on me because I've been really leaning towards some natural materials. I have a hair's mask. On one side of this eye, there's some really nice tan dubbing. So I'm just going to pull you know, six or eight clumps out of there. I'm not going to worry so much if I get guard hairs in there because number one, they're going to look buggy and that's not a bad thing at all. But number two, I can always cut them out or pull them out once I have the body dubbed. I'm going to put this dubbing directly on my thread. If you want it a little tighter, you can wet your fingers. I'm not going to worry about that too much. I do like it to be just a hair buggier. So this tan atoms almost looks like a parachute hair's ear. As I wind it forward, you can see some of those guard hairs just shooting out. Now at this point, you can see I have extra dubbing on there. And I want to lock in my hackle, but I'm not going to take that extra dubbing off. I'm simply just going to pinch it away from my hook, make one more wrap, and I'm going to first examine the body. I can see there's a, a little guard hair sticking out right there. So I'm just going to trim that out. I'm going to trim the sides of this just to make it look a, a little bit more tapered and a little, little bit slender. Now it's at this point, I'm going to add in my hackle. I've already, shown you the, I've already showed you the two hackles. The Grizzly is a saddle. So I'm basically just going to go to the bottom of it because I've previously used this. Strip away the fibers. And I want to make it so the stem is long enough that I can tie it in on both sides of the parachute post. So I can start it on the left side. That's whenever I'm looking at the hook. Lock it in there with just a few wraps and then go to the right side and then lock in the very end of that base. Now let me show you the, um, the light ginger. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you can see it. If you notice, there's a taper going from, this, from the bottom to the top. It's a little bit wide at the bottom, and then right about the point where I have it uh, at the eye of the hook, that's where it starts to basically even out, and it's about the same width from that point to the top. That's the point where I really want to start this. So everything from this point down, I want to strip away. I just want to get it out of there. Now, if I'm going to be tying any size 14, 16 light Cahills, I can use these pieces. So I can, I'm just going to actually trim that bottom section away. So I can just put that in that little drawer and keep that for future tailing. But in this case, from this point forward, I want to... I want to get rid of all those bottoms, those bottom uh, fibers and create a stem that's long enough again so I can lock it in place on both sides of this parachute post. All right, so I have all that stuff. They're ready to be wound. If I look at the bottom of the fly, you can see my dubbing is looking really well, except I need to finish dubbing the thorax. So it's at this point, this dubbing is just basically making its way back up to the top. Put a couple wraps behind that post, a couple in front of it, 
and I'm, I got a really nice taper going on so I can simply just tie off my hackle at that head point. Now whenever you're winding the hackle around, we don't want to take too many wraps. We've got a lot of fibers there. If it's up to you if you have the Grizzly on top or the light ginger. In this case, I have the light ginger on top and I really don't believe that it makes too big of a difference because the fish are looking at them from the bottom and I believe they're going to be able to see those light ginger, those tan colors through those Grizzly colors. Now, if you don't feel comfortable wrapping them together, you can always just grab a pair of hackle pliers and wrap them one at a time. In this case, for me, I'm just going to grab the two of them, make one, and as the second one's coming around, let's try that again. At this point, that's it. I don't want to use too many fibers here. So as I made that second one around, I'm just going to stop it there and I'm going to tie it off. All right, since I've been talking more than tying, let me finish this part. So I have both feathers coming towards me. I'm going to wet my left, hand, my left fingers just a hair and lift up all of those fibers near the front. Then I can release the tips of the hackle fibers, the hackle um, stems. I'm just going to lock them in place. Now whenever I let go, I can definitely see the spot where these hackle tips are coming out and where all the other fibers are from my parachute. I'm just going to lift these, trim them as close to the eye as possible because I want to get all those extra fibers out of the way. And before I finish everything off, I just want to give it one more peek, make sure everything looks okay as it does on the bottom. I'm going to wet those fibers one more time to get them out of the way. Make a nice clean head. Put in our whip finish, trim our thread, and we have nearly a complete tan atoms. At this point, however, I want to trim this parachute post because it is way too long. And you have kind of a couple decisions here. If you remember earlier when I was talking about the high-vis uh, pink and the high-vis chartreuse that I use, I really prefer to keep those as small as possible because I'm not really using those to represent an insect wing. But in this case, in these in these um, tan atoms, we can also say that this tan wing or this tan parachute post, or if we're going with a brown parachute post, can absolutely be representational of a caddis wing. So keep that in mind because if you really want to leave that a little bit longer and then somehow just kind of work it towards the back, you can do so and it will look really quite like a caddis. In my case, however, I'm going to be fishing this fly as an attractor in these larger sizes and in size 12 and in size 10. Hence, I don't need to have it as a super long post. I like to keep it right around this length. Now, if you don't feel comfortable cutting it off immediately that short, you can instead just leave it a little bit longer and make any adjustments on the river. So let me give you just a quick 360 of the fly. I'll just kind of print it out for you. You can see the bottom, all that tan, the ginger and grizzly hackle showing through. We have a nice tail just with a little bit of an angle and then we have that parachute post angling back. I'm gonna give you that 360 view one more time, this time with these lights off because they provide such an intense look. There is the finished fly yet again. So those were the tying procedures for the Tan Adams. Next, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the fly and give you some of my own comments and thoughts regarding it. Now that you see just how easy it is to tie this fly, let me tell you a little bit more about the pattern. I first heard about this whenever I was at a John Garrick book reading. He was in the middle of reading one of his chapters when he mentioned the words Tan Adams. I had never heard those two words combined before, and a few of us looked around wondering if any of us had fished the pattern or have even heard of it. We hadn't. What I think this speaks to is the notion of the fly tying variation. The fact that someone took this timeless classic pattern and made just a couple slight modifications to it and out came this wonderful fly that works in so many situations. It deserves a spot in your box and it certainly has a spot in mine. Now let's talk about how I like to fish this fly. I fish it in both still water and moving water situations, though I prefer the latter. Whenever I'm fishing this on rivers and streams, I prefer to fish it in one of two ways, either as an attractor or as a caddis representation. Whenever I'm fishing it as an attractor fly, I like to fish it in sizes 10, 12, and 14, basically larger sizes. 
Off the bend of the hook, I'll tie in a six to eight inch piece of monofilament, four X or five X, and I'll tie in a bead head to that. I'll then fish this pattern as I'm moving upstream, making upstream casts against the far bank. In those instances, a lot of the, fly, a lot of the fish will come up and they'll take this tan atoms off the water, or if they reject it, a lot of the time they'll take that bead head that's hanging from it. I prefer to fish this in waters that are known to have larger flies. I'm talking about drakes or isonychias. And though it's not a perfect representation of either one of those necessarily, it works really well. I also like to fish it to represent caddisflies, and it does a great job with that tan body. In the waters that I fish, there are so many caddises that are tan, and this works really well on those trout. Now, it doesn't look perfectly like a caddis. For instance, it has this grizzly and light ginger tail that most caddisflies won't have at that length anyway. But it works really great on the trout, and I prefer to fish it in that kind of rough and choppy water where the fish have a chance to look at it and basically say, yeah, this looks pretty much like a caddis, but they don't have that time to necessarily critique it, so to say. It works really well, and I absolutely recommend you trying it out this season. Well, with all that said, thank you for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them directly on this YouTube page, or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. If you'd like to watch more of these videos, you can view them at my website, which is troutandfeather.com, and I also have a Facebook page that you can like. Well, as always, thank you so much for all the positive comments, and I hope you enjoyed this YouTube fly tying tutorial of the Tan Atoms.